Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of So How'd You Get Here? I'm Angelo. And I'm Tony. And if you're tuning in for the first time, um, this is a podcast where we dive in to backstories. I mean, everyone starts somewhere and we want to know if you actually ended up getting there. This is true. Um, let's hope we did. Let's hope we did. Yeah. And so today we have a very special guest. Um, this is my friend. Uh, she's been on Mandalorian, SWAT, Captain Marvel, um, you do VR capture stunts, you double for people. Um, you've worked on a couple big video games, Elder Scrolls, which I play because I'm a nerd. Borderlands, that Batman. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna jump right into this because um, I think we should get this started. I'd like to welcome to the show today my good friend Amy Sturdivant. Yes. Sturdivant, welcome, welcome. You can go with whatever you like. Okay. <laughs> Well, now that I've messed that name up enough, how you doing? I think it sounds good. Doing good. Thanks for coming on our show today. Thanks for having me. I've noticed that when we do all the bios of people, they're so much cooler than us. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, literally. The, the credits are always way better. I get people above <laughs> us on our yeah, show yeah. every week. Perfect. So um, how you get here? <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, I know how you got here, um, but let's back all the way up because we're from the same state. We're both from yeah. Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, well, I think this starts all the way back from what you've told me. You were you were kind of rambunctious as a kid, yeah? You climbed kind on of. stuff that you weren't supposed to be. Yeah. And yeah, jumped yeah. off things you weren't supposed to jump off of. That's exactly and right. And broke things you weren't <laughs> supposed to break. Mm -hmm. Every parent's perfect child. Oh, absolutely. This, absolutely. this, this child is A plus over here. So um, what, um, let's, go with, um, let's go with the first time you knew, hey, that's dangerous. Maybe I want to actually take that on. Uh, when I was a kid? Sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Start uh, wherever you want. Yeah, so uh, I definitely had that reputation. <laughs> uh, but I was quiet and unassuming. So, um, yeah, I was always climbing on top of the play structures. And um, at one point was climbing up the slide, fell down and hit my tooth on it. So I had like a uh, brown tooth for a while, eventually fell out. And I was a kid without the front tooth. Um, okay. <laughs> but, uh, well, the, the new one grew in great, just, well, just in case you. you were wondering. <laughs> it's not fake, so that's good. <laughs> Before it all came in. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was kind of my childhood. Um, my parents put me into indoor rock climbing. I uh, did that competitively growing up, um, mostly just to kind of get that out of me and have a safe place for it. Is that um, like before 10 years old, after 10? Like what, what's the I was age? I about seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I started. I was kind of one of the younger kids on the okay. team. Uh, but Both your parents are athletes though, yes? They are, yeah. They grew up um, like doing track. They met in college on, the, oh, on cool. the field. So So you got some great genetics going on there. Yeah. My dad ended up um, teaching hurdles in high school, and they were pretty involved with our athletics growing up, myself and my brother. So. And how many siblings do you have? Just an older brother. Just an older brother. Were you a yeah. track athlete as well? I was uh, in high school. In, so. in hurdles? In hurdles and pole vaulting. Oh, cool. Um, did the decathlon as well. Nice. Which, uh, it was like the only one they had for women in like the Northwest. Yeah. Or I think it was even like they just, they only had heptathlons. Um, yeah. right, right, right. So I was only, I was able to do the one that they had for yeah. women um, in high school. Yeah. But yeah. You went all the way to state that. and something though. In pole vaulting and I believe hurdles, um, 300 hurdles, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, mostly like at the end of the year, I would do the decathlon, and that was kind of my my favorite thing uh, to end it off. <laughs> so you oh, so from a young age, you liked physicality of yeah. some kind. Mm -hmm. All right. Did that lead? Did that get like, you scholarships, or did that lead to wanting to do? Were you that into it that you wanted to pursue it in college? No. So um, I, I got a couple of offers, um, just a couple of letters saying like, hey, check out our school right, right. Uh, for track. But I didn't want to pursue it. I wasn't super passionate about it. I just kind of did it for friends and right. to stay active and do something after school. Um, so I didn't pursue it in college. Uh, just went on and did like intramurals. Oh, okay. Um, like ultimate frisbee and <laughs> football yeah, right, right, and right, stuff. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, all the fun things. With so in all of your high school activities, did you ever think, oh, maybe that could connect to film or stunts? Or? Not at all. No, um, I didn't. I didn't really know about the film industry. Um, were you a fan of movies, or are you just not even that kind of? Uh, yes. I mean, I enjoyed watching right. movies for sure, but I didn't like geek out of yeah, right, right. or okay. anything. Um, so I grew up like with the camcorder, and like we would make our own things and. 
Uh, myself and my best friend would like make our own little shows, but oh, cool! Do we have the ability to definitely get hold not? Of it? Come on! I don't even think I have them. I think they got. Can I get over. your dad's phone number? Yeah. I've got a couple questions. <laughs> Cut to you. They were on at... tape, so yeah, we get... I don't even think that we have that's tape a players thing. right behind yeah. you. Don't even worry <laughs> we'll about that. that out. Um, so yeah, I didn't. I didn't really um, put the two together. I just kind of did that right. for fun. In high school, actually, I can uh, remember back to. Mr. Notaboom's class when we had to do a project, um, and I think it was U.S. history, and I did this ridiculous, this one I really hope never comes to light, but um, <laughs> this, like, ridiculous project where um, I was in, like, a muscle suit and, like, on a horse, and that was actually my first stunt that little did I know was even a thing was a stunt. Um, where one of my friends like yanked me off the horse to the ground and we wrestled and she pinned me down and like a dead man just pulled right off. She just like... yanked my, yeah, yanked me right off. So, um, fell whatever, six feet down <laughs> and, uh, landed on my back and, and that's when you luckily knew. I didn't hurt myself because yeah. I had no idea how to fall at that point. Um, that's not how I knew though. Right. Cause I remember you telling me at one point it was something with your dad suggested something with film or stunts. Right. So uh, I went to college. I was going to college for sociology. Okay. Um, wanted to go into nonprofit management. That was kind of my path. But uh, three years in, my dad sent me an article one day and was like, hey, check this out. This is kind of cool. Um, didn't realize I would actually look into it and try to pursue it. Right. right, right. But it was about Hollywood stunts, and um, he just sent it over, and I, I read it, and kind of looked online and uh, was curious about what this whole thing was and um, ultimately decided to pursue it. <laughs> um, right. Well, it's funny that you're saying it because a lot of the guests that we have come on talk about, you know, their, that's like their journey is like, I want to get out to LA or get to New York because I want to do this. Mm -hmm. You kind of like, almost like fell into it a little bit. Kind of literally. Just, you were yeah. li literally uh -huh. like you're kind of intrigued, but didn't really know. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't have a background um, in martial arts or anything right. uh, or acrobatics. A lot of people get in with that. Yeah, gymnasts even, and stuff. Even yeah. dancing, like people are able to pick up choreo with that. I didn't have yeah. any of that background. You don't want to see me dance. Um, <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, just kind of wanted something physical. Um, and growing up as an athlete, um, I just kind of... Saw so it as something that was maybe a potential for something right. that I could do. Um, didn't know everything that was involved with it, um, but just kind of jumped right into it and learned as I went. And luckily, I didn't have any bad habits that I had to break. And um, but at the same time, everybody in front of me was um, kind of gearing up to do that for their life. So right. they had they were steps ahead in terms yeah. of training or. Um, filmmaking or whatever it yep. was that they wanted on their path. What was the deciding factor that really said, okay, I'm going to take this leap and come to Los Angeles? Uh, I kind of... Was, was it Los Angeles at first? It was Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. So um, I just kind of decided I wanted to go down and check it out. Um, I was stuck what, in... What year is this? Roughly. 2012. Did you I leave think. college to do this or you graduated and then that was like the next... Um, so I found out about it, um, and then ended up doing this program up in Seattle, um, that kind of give you an introduction to, oh, cool. to what stunts was. Um, it was kind of a very generic overview yeah. of everything, but got to try it out a little bit. Um, and I only had one semester left where I was going to go study abroad. So went and did that, um, and then came back and started making trips to LA just to see what the industry was right. and network. What and it offered, yeah. Um, I was able to meet up with some of my dad's like coworkers, brothers, friends, like just randomly, um, emailed them out of the blue and was like, Hey, I'm coming down there. Want to do stunts? Don't know what it is, but can because you they about lived it? just in LA or they were involved in that world. They were involved in that world. Okay. Um, I think his coworkers, brother, or cousin was maybe a writer. Got um, it. and he had some stunt friends and they were, they were willing to meet up with me and kind of, um, tell me like the raw yeah, yeah. version of what stunts was right. and what I was actually getting myself into, which I'm super grateful for because I've kind of had this like maybe glorified version of what it was like being in action and, you know, getting set on fire and jumping off of buildings mm -hmm. and like, and it's really taking aspirin and icing shoulders or something yes, like that. There's a lot of that. Right. So, um, 
yeah, so was able to kind of get that perspective from people that were al- already working. Um, I didn't really know anyone down here. Um, just had like maybe two friends yeah. down here that were trying to pursue the same thing at the same time. Um, couch surfed for a while and just kind of tried to figure it out. Um, I was going to go over to Atlanta, uh, but just kind of got stuck in LA. And Why Atlanta? <laughs> is what, did Atlanta just have more going on? So um, at the time, 2013, 14, uh, Atlanta was starting to pop off and become like another major hub. Mm-hmm. Um, Los Angeles, Atlanta, at one point Louisiana was uh, in New York. Mm-hmm. So I was going to try to check out all of those places, but I didn't know anyone over there. <laughs> and right. I had maybe two people here that I knew. So um, just kind of got stuck here. And people said, I hate to say it, but like if you want to start a career, um, a lot of people said, stay in LA. Um, it'll take longer, but it'll, you know, you'll get better right. over time. And also, probably is a place to open up more doors if you're willing to. Yeah, Stick absolutely. And if you wanted to go to Atlanta, like I could probably have started working way sooner than I actually did in Atlanta. Um, just because they were in need of a lot of people because there was so much going on there. Yeah. Um, so if you want a job, go there. If you want a career, stay in LA. Oh, um, and I'm really grateful that I did just because it's very established here. And that was kind of a newer space that people were kind of trying, to, trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, yeah, had I gone there, I'd be working, but wouldn't have had the opportunities that I had here um, with the training and and people that kind of took me under their wings. Speaking of the training, since kind of for the audience and the viewers and the listeners, um, what's like the basics? Like, what do you have to do first? Because no one just comes down here to be stunts and then they put you in a movie and you're, like you said, getting caught on fire or falling off a building. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's like the... So um, people always say the bread and butter of stunts is fighting and falling. Um, I didn't have any martial arts experience. Um, That was all very new to me, and I was terrible at it, (laughs) at fighting at all. So, um, yeah, that was all new. Uh, Now, like, just kicking and punching or, like, doing the whole, you know, choreography? Because I kind of feel like it's both, right? All of the above. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, didn't know how to throw a prop- proper punch um, or a kick or any of that. Yeah. So I had to learn that. Um, and I kind of went the, the opposite direction of what a lot of other people do is um, I learned how to try to sell it for film first. Um, just very basics, um, foundational, like kicks and punches mm-hmm. and falling to the ground. Um, and then now I'm actually going in and delving into the arts and figuring out all of the little details to kind of fill in those gaps that I might have had um, that I didn't know going into it right? Uh, and can make it more realistic and have proper technique rather than, you know, if I'm doing a shoulder throw or something, um, I can actually throw somebody safely rather than them trying to throw themselves um, over top of me, which, which we still do to kind of add to making it bigger but, right. um, for film. But Cool. Yeah. Well, do you have an... In- do you have an injury that you can chat about that's not too bad? I actually am very fortunate, knock on wood, that I haven't gotten injured. Okay. Um, at, at the very beginning, I separated my shoulder um, when I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, this was like probably a month in to, <laughs> to being in L.A. Um, but, yeah, so I, I fell weird, didn't even have to fall at that point, um, landed right on it. But, um since then, AC healed up sprain and or just totally smoked the shoulder itself. Uh, it was an AC spra- sprain, <laughs> okay. yeah. So yeah. it wasn't terrible. Those hurt, but they're small, but they hurt. Yeah, I didn't do anything to rehab it, so it stayed with me for a couple of years, um, <sighs> probably more than a couple of years. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, was able to get past that and then finally learn how to fall properly, and which is good because. Also, you um, do a lot of interaction with weapons, too, from mm-hmm. guns to what, SWAT. You're in that full body armor. Yep. Shoot, yeah. Shooting out of the back of that truck. Yep. So I had to learn how to handle guns and um, do ta- tactical movement, learn how to clear rooms and stuff as well. There's so much that goes into it that um, you just... You're like John Wick. <laughs> Actually, and you, we trained some jujitsu over quarantine, so yeah. you add that to your skill set, too. Exactly. Right. She's pretty good. <laughs> what is a basic way to fall? Um, and obviously you can't show us, but like just maybe a little 
Right. Uh, I mean, obviously, you don't want to put your hands back. You could break your wrists, your okay. shoulders, all that. Um, it's just learning how to kind of fall on those big muscle groups um, and protect your head, mm-hmm. tuck your chin, uh, that kind of thing. Got it. Yeah. So there's a little bit of an art to it um, just to, to prevent, like, minor injuries. Right. <laughs> Is there... Um, a favorite or a, a worst kind of stunt you just preferred not to do? E- either personal preference or they're just really hard to pull off or, you know what I mean? Something like that. Um, not necessarily something that I hate doing. You um, like water. I know you like water. You've told me like that several times. Yeah. <laughs> no, but... Because uh, you surf too. I do surf now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of figuring out uh, what you're good at and then... A lot of the times coordinators are able to come in and they know your skill set already. Right. Um, or they've been recommended. So, or been, you've been recommended to them. Um, so they kind of know that you can do the job. Um, but a lot of people ask like, what's the scariest thing that you've done? And yeah. um, I think it's to answer that, it kind of depends on what their fears are. You know, so if they're afraid of fire or water oh, right, um, right, or right. heights or something, mm. um, sometimes there's like, car guys or motorcycle guys or high dive guys um you just bought a bike too bike didn't guys. you i did yeah so there's a lot add of that things to your I skill can, set add that to your <laughs> so many things to go into um but like i'm trying to just kind of get the general basics of everything so if i have to double and have to take off on a motorcycle um just get from point a to point b or even just get on start it and you know go out of frame I want to be able to do that smoothly. Um, same with cars. Like, I'm not necessarily going to be hired to do, like, major stunts with cars. Um, right. But I want to be able to maneuver and do very basic um, things, hold, you know, hold a pattern or whatever that is. So, um, I mean, there's got to be a difference between driving a stunt car situation and then also getting hit by a car. There y- is. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. what's... So, are um, you more the like I get hit by a car and go flying 30 feet? I'm more feet? of that type. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I wasn't able to do a car hit yeah. um, recently that I was kind of lined up to do. Um, I it's one of those things that's kind of on my like, I guess bucket list for yeah. things I want to do with my career um, before my body hurts too bad. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but yeah, there's a few things like that. Um, I'm just kind of just trying to. Uh, Oh, build no. the resume the, just kind of grow yeah, yeah yeah exactly um but at this point uh going into that stunt I feel like I'm at a position where um I'm very aware of um like where I'm at in the air air awareness uh is there and how to take impact and everything um that I would feel comfortable saying yes to that knowing who the driver was and who I'm like you know in the hands of I guess um right. but beforehand you know, I wouldn't want to take that stunt just because I wasn't fully aware of what I'm capable of right. and where I'm at in the air. And um, so you have to even go on like trampolines and flip around and try to figure out, um, you know, how you would land, how, how far you would land. Yeah. Exactly. So, so what, so things. again, for the audience, what, um, what's the prep like that? Like, like what would they do on a film? Say you, it was a car mm-hmm. hit. Oh, um, well, actually, yeah. is there a stunt that you did in a film that's out there? Could you just walk us through, like, prep training and then the execution of yeah, the stunt? Yeah, perfect. If you're allowed Good to share. I know you question. can't talk about some of the stuff because it hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Um, I guess since I do more of, like, you know, Doubling fight, even. fight scenes and yeah. everything, um, a lot of the times we'll have a prep period where we have to do um, a pre and so, I've seen you do some of that work. It's impressive. Yeah. So we'll kind of, um, we'll get the script, break it down, uh, see what the action is. And they have a very general overview of mm-hmm. like, this is kind of what we want. Um, and we have to learn, or we have to figure out how to interpret what they have on the page and then um, translate it to something exciting and something that fits the story and everything. Right. So a lot of the times we'll get together um, as a stunt team and film Um, different aspects of of that scene and give them different options for like um, I guess what they're what they're looking for try to figure out exactly because I feel like on the page it probably says (laughs) 
insert cool stunt scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and exactly. Then, and then there's like nothing there. Right. Right. Because Born Ultimatum is massively different right. than Matrix mm-hmm. is totally different than Fight Club. You know, right. those are just. Or a rom com just has a guy getting beat up at like a bar because he hit on the wrong girl. You know, what also I, mean? I feel like there's. There's so many different aspects. Exactly. So we have to figure out um, the different characters and how they might move and how you can differentiate them, uh, what they might use to fight, um, you know, what instincts they might use um, within the fight as well and kind of um, figure out how that works for their character and the story. But at the same time, you don't want to necessarily box in that actor because we haven't had the chance to work with them yet, don't know what their their decisions are going to be behind um, the action, what motivates them for that. So we just kind of give um, a general idea of what we think would work for the scene. And then we have to adapt and get notes from the director mm-hmm. um, and then continue on, give them more options. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of plays out. Have you out, ever done actors. all that training and then the lead actress or whoever you're doubling for is like, no, nah, I got this. Oh, I could do that. I could take a fall. There, and yeah. you're like, oh, okay. Well, you're Tom, Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he's a producer on a lot of things. Right. So he does whatever do he wants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of the times it's for the safety of the actors. So we try to get them to do as much as mm-hmm. we can because we want to be able to sell their face for camera. Um, but, you know, when it comes to falling um, or being on wire sometimes, yeah. um, we just kind of prep them for what they're able to do and what the pr- right, production what the, will let them yeah. get away with yeah. legally. What insurance uh, covers. Exactly. Um, and then kind of go from there. So, yeah, it's cool working uh, and collaborating with, like, the stunt team to, to see what we can come up with to um, kind of enhance the script. And That's awesome. So in the yeah. last eight or nine years, did you came out at about 12, 13, right, you said? Uh, 2000, yeah, 13. How has the female stunt person in your mind like grown um it's been a really good time to to come in at least for myself um just because right now uh or at least in like the last five years or so yeah hollywood's really been trying to figure out um what a strong female looks like in film um so being a part of that i've been able to take on different roles, um, whether that's being my own character and kind of um, representing, like, you know, the token female bad guy, Mm -hmm. or um, if that's just being amongst the guys uh, within the armor and you can't tell the difference between all of us, um, I've been able to kind of get those roles uh, and, I guess, in a way, kind of break the stereotype um, that there is in Hollywood right now. Yeah to yeah to see what we can <laughs> what we can do with that and no i feel like there's quite a lot of work especially with all the the marvel movies and all the star you know there's mm-hmm. all these sets that have so many people and like everything's got like a fight scene or a, it's i feel like yeah there's tonight right now would be the biggest time for yeah. stunt people in general absolutely male or female yeah had more opportunities to kind of do more character roles sometimes i'm in prosthetics um or yeah, just doing these these stronger roles and um, just kind of trying to figure out what that means for me as well. Because um, coming into the industry, I wasn't exactly sure, like, what the purpose was for me being here. You right. Know? Um, so just kind of discovering that I've been able to see how my involvement in this process um, has inspired, like, younger girls or other other performers or whatever it is, um, just that we can kind of take on those roles now. Um, and, and you've, it, it's worked you've so doubled, far. though, for for a couple couple big names in there. Yeah. Can um, you say them or no? You probably can't. Probably not as <laughs> Yeah. All right, we'll leave those right, out. Don't worry about it. No, probably not yet, but we can talk about some of the things you worked on, though. So you worked yeah. on Captain Marvel, Captain which is Marvel. huge. Yep. So. Um, Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. What else? What were you in the Mandalorian with other times? obviously it's out we can yeah yeah so um on mandalorian i've got i got to play multiple roles oh awesome um so i was there um i could double gina she was able to do a lot of her own action um but i was there just in case to take some falls or what like any more intricate um you know choreo or anything but we would kind of take turns and she would go in there and do her thing and then um i would kind of do a pass and everything 
but um, there was that, and then uh, I did a lot of stormtrooper um, work, so I was always in the suit. Always in the suit. Kind of clunking around with the guys. Um, I'm going to put your clip up right <laughs> now. Right now, okay, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, had to take falls like like the guys in that suit. Um, uh, what else did I do? Uh, I was able to use the where the kind of prosthetic type um, heads mm-hmm. for different characters. I don't know exactly the names that they chose for those. Um, I only knew the working names. So when you get cast for a show, are you just cast for anything? Is that how a stunt performer? If you're on set, you're on you're you're on set, and they can use you for whatever they need. They can. Or are you just cast for a particular role? Uh, like it, how does that it work? really depends. It really depends. So sometimes you're you're cast to just double. Um, sometimes you're just a single character. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're on like a team, then they can use you uh, wherever they need to, kind of fill in right. different spaces. So luckily they're able to, um, you know, put me in a mask or a helmet or whatever, and just kind of completely change my look and use me multiple times. Oh yeah. Um, so we try not to quote unquote, burn ourselves from the show. Um, do you prefer uh, like stormtrooper outfit or do you prefer actually in makeup as character, like special effects makeup? I've been asked that. Um, comfortability wise, um, being in prosthetics is usually less comfortable. The a 23 hour day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a 23 hour day. And I shot for 15 minutes. And a half. Yeah. And exactly. I have one line. Yeah. So going through the process of getting all of those on, um, like I just did something that took like four and a half hours to uh, sit in the chair every morning and get prosthetics put on me. But my outfit was comfortable. So I was good the whole day. Um, besides, you know, wearing teeth and putting on contacts that aren't comfortable right. um but other than that um yeah if you're in the stormtrooper outfit um or in the costume it's very heavy and you're kind of like you know uncomfortable all day um so it's kind of a toss-up between the two but i don't mind doing either of them um it's all kind of part of it and it's cool to be in that environment and i'm surprised since 1977 they haven't figured out how to make the stormtrooper costume more <laughs> more lightweight and <laughs> comfortable yeah. for people they actually uh sent them over from england from the the older right that these films. are the originals mm-hmm, exactly <laughs> and they're not made for people to right. be in <laughs> so a lot of pinch points but um but you learn where to put like different gel pads and stuff and What's um what's one of your favorite either shows or at least the the role and the character you got to play on that show? So uh, that's a really hard question. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, how about we're no, here trying no, to get no, the hard no, question. We're trying to get the hard you, question. I got you. Um so I I would always say uh SWAT was kind of the first one where I was like fully involved um and got to play a character um, the TV series not the, the movie TV with Colin got Farrell. Got right. It. Yeah. Um, just because I, I got to be on the back of the truck kind of tagged in, um, and had a machine gun and was in a high speed chase with cops and, um, was, yeah, was shooting at him. And then all of a sudden about like 20 feet behind me, probably a little bit more, um, there was a pipe ramp that went off, um, for one of the cop cars that was chasing us. And I just saw him flip and, you know, land in front of me, huge explosion and, like, that was the first one where I was like, oh, I'm in a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm a part of it. So um, it was really cool. Um, I felt like I was I've seen the clip. It's pretty awesome. Where was that movie. shot? Was that here in L.A.? <laughs> it was in L.A. Yeah. So um, super fun, even though I, w- I was just kind of along for the ride and, you know, taking some hits from passing cars. and But that was kind of one of the major turning points for me I was like okay this is this is this was is that like cool. you kind of feel like you made it in a way like kind of thing well it was one of those things that was different than what I had been doing oh, okay um, you're just like falling and getting a lot of up. falls yeah. getting a lot of gunshots dying so many times <laughs> that <laughs> this time I actually got to do some damage um and that'll be and good when you're like 80 and you write your book and you're just like I died a thousand times, times. Million, yeah yes many, many and times, i don't know that much so. about squibs would you would you talk about that real quick when you're doing gunfire and that kind of stuff yeah um i haven't done like crazy hard squibs where like they'll actually bruise you um a lot of the ones that i've had are like sparks or something right. um 
So oh, and for any listeners who don't know what that is, can you give a quick 10 second of what that is? Uh, squibs are essentially like a special effect that um, goes off to simulate, to simulate a gunshot. A gunshot. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, a lot of the times they'll, I'm wearing some kind of armor or something, they'll put it on there. So it's not actually on my skin. Um, but yeah, yeah. Died quite a few times. Um, oh, there's <laughs> a question. How many times have you died? It's, I couldn't even count, count at this point. You gotta go back and count. That's, yeah. I want to um, know your hit list. Kills Percy. and deaths. Yeah, right. Yeah, what did you play on uh, on Captain Marvel? Because that was obviously a huge, well, it's going to be a huge franchise, and she's mm-hmm. probably the most iconic female so far. In the Other than Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah. Well, in the Marvel universe. Yeah, Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I was playing one of the scrolls, so one of the green characters um, with the ears. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. um, yeah, so I was in one of the uh, the scenes in the ship fighting her. Um, as well as like out in this quarry, um, right. which they actually took out that entire battle scene. That oh, really? Um, <laughs> it was a, it was a big one that we had prepped for, um, oh, well over a month. Mm-hmm. And, uh, there was like this huge, um, it was just like truss above us with, with a million lines. It looked like, um, like a spider web essentially. Cause there were just, everyone was going to be tagged in and, um, you know, people were on ratchets or hand pulls, um, which essentially are you're you're in a scene and like if something blows up, mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. they'll pull they you or pull the wire and right. you go flying. Yeah, exactly. You fly out. Um, so on that one, I was on a wire and they were going to pull me, pull me and then do like kind of a dead man, um, which is essentially like a hard stop. And then I would be, you know, um, on my kind of neck and shoulders <laughs> and rolling and um but yeah, so we did that scene, um, and then there was that one point where he kind of lifts us up and, and throws us out, and um, yeah, just just all sorts of stunts with that one. Um, Something I want to go back to, so your dad kind of put that article in your, I don't know, in your wheelhouse, I guess. Um, your parents seem to be super supportive of what you're doing. They are. I mean, obviously, you you know grew up an athlete track there are track people mm-hmm. you went to college you graduated not doing your major moved to LA you're doing stunts mm-hmm. and they're just hey go go do it kid yeah super supportive um can't ask for more you know uh they love when I when I call them up on my way home from set sitting in traffic for two hours yeah. <laughs> and like kind of tell them about my day um of course they're concerned sometimes when when I have something coming up but uh yeah they've been more than supportive same with my brother um, That's amazing because we all, I mean, the three of us pretty much don't have anyone in entertainment in our family. Okay. Yeah. So we're just all kind of out here trying to make it. And yep. it's nice to hear when the parents, first generation. Yeah. It's nice to hear when the parents are like, yeah, our, our daughter's doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They love telling their friends and, you know, chalk me up to be something more than I am. But, uh, but it's fun. We've known each other for what, probably almost two years now, I mm-hmm. think, something like that. Something like that. And uh, when I first met you, you were like, I don't like lines. I don't want to talk. I don't want any, I don't want to say anything. Even right now, yes. going through glass panes and, and fighting people, you're like, yeah, all day. no problem. <laughs> Has that started to go away now? You think maybe, may, I'm hoping for you that you'll maybe take on a few lines. Yeah. It's fizzling out a little bit. Like you the know, fear, the fear. Okay, cool. It. Um, it's still when I'm given a line or two or, have a whole scene I have to do, then um, I stress about that more than anything. Like, just throw me out a window. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, uh, but But is the fear subsiding a little bit because you're learning or seeing that there's more opportunity for you? I am seeing that there's more opportunity. um, And then I'm also kind of seeing, I've been paying more attention to the process of it. So um, I'm there in the blocking of it with the director. Um, always pay attention to the notes that they're giving the actors. Um, I mean, you are basically watching really good actors perform. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm super you're getting fortunate. a hands-on training that no one really gets. Mm-hmm. So I always try to kind of be within earshot of, yeah. um, of everything that's going on and notes that are being made. Um, sec- yeah. Sit next to like the director or second unit director and like kind of in the shadows and mm-hmm. um, wait for the actor to come over and for them to give them notes and, um, maybe try this a different way. So just kind of taking note of that. Um, That's smart. It's a little bit less intimidating. Um, yeah. And 
yeah, just kind of trying to. I mean, you could take a million acting classes in Los Angeles and you'll never get that experience. Right. I'm super fortunate. So. Um, one of my roommates is uh, a very good actor and um, he's been a huge help in um, taking on these roles. I'll be like, hey, can you help me with this audition? Yeah, and yeah of course. He's like, in a heartbeat, um, he'll be there and kind of give me things that I would never think of mm. myself um, and just different approaches. Mm. And I'll try them and... I'll never want to look at the playback um, yeah. and I'll just send them in um, and have been fortunate with that. Um, and yeah, it's kind of given me more of a range, which is good because I just, I didn't come from that world. Um, so it's kind of all very new to me, mm -hmm. but I'm just kind of taking it as it comes. And yeah. that's just kind of how I live life in general is um, wherever it takes me, whatever path and I'll just follow it and see what happens. And that's how I kind of ended up here. Um, and that's kind of how I'm going with the rest now, of it. Now, do you have a stunt <laughs> agent? I don't, no. Do you need one? Is you that not how the business works? No, so within stunts, um, there are a couple of people that have, like, commercial agents. Okay. But a lot of the times, um, it's just word of mouth. And, and they're calling you directly or emailing you directly? and right. see. Okay. Yeah, so um, especially with stunts. Um, either you'll know a stunt coordinator or somebody will ask, um, people that they trust and be like, Hey, do you know somebody of this size or this look, um, trying to fill this role? And then you'll, you'll get a call. Um, with some of the auditions, it's been like, I've, I've worked with them, uh, directors or something on previous shows and right. they kind of asked for me to, to read lines and, um, yeah. And then I've kind of gotten stuff that way, but. But for the most part, it's just word of mouth or friends. And they literally just call you or email you and see what your availability is or right. if you can do the stunt or not? or uh, All of the above. Um, it usually starts with availability, uh, especially if they know my skill set. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't know going What are you it. known for? Like, what is your skill set? Uh, or do you just have a, an array of, yeah. I'll, I'll do anything? Fighting, falling, wire work, Got uh, it. tactical. Got it. Um, or it's kind of in my back pocket right now. Okay. But, um, but yeah, if there's something that they're unsure about, they'll usually kind of walk you through and be like, Hey, are you comfortable doing mm -hmm. this? Um, I know you, you said a yes car no. hit is a bucket list. Is there one other thing that you haven't done yet that you're like, Oh, I can't wait till I get to that. Mm, no, I really enjoy, um, being on a wire. Um, so anything that's involved with that, um, or even just jumping off a building would be one of them for, for film. No fear of heights. No, um, not really. So just but two of, lines of dialogue will do you in. It will do me <laughs> in. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is our monologue segment? Yeah. So I don't know what you We're prepared. not going to say anything I don't know what you prepared. minute, so. but I would like to see whatever monologue you have ready and prepared. Oh, it's prepared. Yeah. All right, you ready? Ready, go. Yeah, I don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. You're like and scene. And scene. And scene. Well yeah. done. Well done. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah. What, are, what are you looking forward to uh, as things are opening up? what you can talk about uh anything coming up that you're kind of uh, getting excited about um there is a film coming out that i gotta do reshoots on um that they pushed beyond since since there was covid mm -hmm. um it's supposed to be released in theaters i can't talk about anything beyond right, right. that but um excited for that to be coming out um let me know when you are allowed to talk about it and yeah we'll We'll say it out loud on this. Um, Army of the Dead just came out. I wasn't really a part of it. I does, went in for Zach like Schneider literally a weekend. Movie? <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, went in for a weekend with like 30 stunt people that they just kind of flew out for whatever it was, the scene that they needed. Um, so that's fun. A lot of friends' faces are, are in that when I started watching Has it most of the night. work you've gotten been Los Angeles? Like, uh, yes. So uh, I actually have I know you said you started out. here, and, and but I didn't know if they're like, well... We're going to fly to New York now in Atlanta because that's where kind of the work was for a minute. Right. Um, I've been super fortunate to get work out here. Um, a lot of people are actually shocked with how much I've been able to, to work in mm -hmm. L.A. And they're like, oh, I wish I was home and right, right. Super, super lucky. Um, I have been out to Chicago, uh, Texas, New Mexico. Um, I haven't been out to Atlanta yet. Kind of waiting for that opportunity. And another bucket list thing is, is going international uh, ah. with the production. So hopefully that'll happen soon. Um, I was well, supposed to. I think to. they're going to do like <laughs> 300 Mission Impossible, so you might be able to get in on one of them eventually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so actually the one of the films I was supposed to um, 
travel with this year um, because of COVID. Everything got shut down, and now they're just filming in Long Beach. But we were supposed to go to, like, Thailand and France oh, wow. and Prague. And they're still doing kind of the back end of yeah. that, going to those two. But, um, but yeah, that was kind of Any projects you've turned down <laughs> that went on to become no, nothing? No? no, I've been um, pretty fortunate with how things have worked out timing-wise mm-hmm. so far. Um, and when one thing, en- thing ends, then a lot of the times yeah. there's kind of something that... You don't need like a two month recovery of your, (laughs) of your body. No, if there (laughs) is, then, um, I just kind of enjoy it. Um, it's one of those things that you can really stress about, you know, when's the next job or I'm not working. Like, what did I do wrong? Um, and I had that a lot, Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone goes through that, but now I'm kind of at that point where I'm like, okay, I've got a week or three weeks or something, um, at least. And, I'm just going to do what I can, either make my own projects. I like to kind of film my own things with friends, um, kind of see my own stories and, right. and concepts, or just train um, different skills that I don't have yet, whether it's surfing or um, now motorcycle. And, uh, yeah, uh, and then just continue to keep up uh, training with martial arts. I'm doing uh, going to an MMA school now and oh, cool. doing more Muay Thai and – picking up wrestling and how's yeah. your jujitsu coming terrible it's, it's not great <laughs> i know a brown belt <coughs> yeah 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 i gotta get more yeah more of those sessions in yeah. <laughs> it looks like this black eye right here on the side of my face All right <laughs> but you know t- that was thursday make it choreo yeah that'll be great i'll, I'll win every time what's something you'd <laughs> give advice what's well that's something what's some advice you'd give to someone especially female that moves out here that wants to get into stuff or is yeah like should i do it should i go for yeah. it well, I'm, I'm not sure yet yeah, I mean, everyone has a different path. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone's got different backgrounds. And it's just kind of figuring out what your strength is. Um, and then just, you know, keeping your ears and eyes open to everything. Um, always be a student. Um, you know, treat everyone with respect and uh, listen to what they have to say. And if it works for you, great, take it. And if it doesn't, then don't worry about it. Do what what does work for you. But it's going to take some time. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Sometimes it happens overnight for people. People get lucky and maybe find somebody that they're a great match for doubling wise mm. and maybe get on their contract and go that route and are with them forever. Um, and sometimes it just takes like five or more years even just to kind of break in. And um, it's about kind of who you know. And so for newer people, people I would say um, go out and like film your own stuff with friends. Um you don't necessarily have to come up with a concept or anything or make it very elaborate, but just try fighting um, in front of camera and figure out what stacks and um, what works for film and uh, see how you look and try different things, try different characters, um, make different decisions. And then I learned the hard way and had to, um, you know, learn how to wreck on concrete Um before I knew how to fall. And I, I you know, <laughs> it was not Why do you say you had to learn on concrete there? You couldn't put a pad down? And you could. Oh, you um, just did not want to. The guys I was working with. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Um, Got it. You know, if you get over that mental barrier, I'll, it's there for a lot of people. Got it. So if they just start you out and be like, all right, this is what this you have to work yeah. with. Um, that's what stunts is. Is like, you sometimes you have to do that and you... We're lucky now that a lot of um, bigger budgets like have high dense foam, high density foam that you can fall on and it's cushy and they can tack it on walls wherever you're going into it. But a lot of the times <laughs> you don't get that luxury. So being comfortable and able to do that outside on concrete, when you go into those situations, you're like, easy, yeah, got yeah. it. So you might. This might be too much out of left field, but is there a shot or a favorite stunt that you admire from a film that you thought was incre- like crazy incredible that you, over the years, you've just noticed and went, wow? Mm. I'm not I already know my favorite, and I'm not even a stunt Do person. you have a favorite? What is it? That Dubai Tom Cruise thing where he literally does like 360 around the building. Oh, 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 yeah, right, yeah, where he's running across. And he did it it himself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one. Mine, uh, you you got yours? I'll give you, I think, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Uh, The Exorcist, when the guy jumps out the window at the end and he goes down that 
15 flights of stairs just bouncing all the way down. Nice. And I guess he did it twice, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Did he have a line on him or anything? Nothing. Okay. This, yeah. was, this was like, what, 1979 yeah. probably? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, he must take 50 to 60 hits coming down those steps. I mean, there's uh, the one in the Jackie, Fan, uh, Jackie Chan film where the guy falls from the rafters and uh, hits and then lands on, like, the edge of the concrete. <sighs> Um, I can't remember exactly. Okay, what we'll that's go with from, that one. For definitely now. that one. Sure. I'll go home uh, you and know, look that one. There's like up. there's older Hong Kong cinema and stuff that yeah, yeah. is very impressive because you know that there was there was nothing there. So um, you know they try to make it as safe as possible, but uh, but yeah, I think some of the older stuff love like Buster Keaton stuff. Oh yeah, yeah I think yes. So. Okay. All right. Um, um, well, yeah. uh, I, as we wrap this up, I always we're, we're starting this tradition where we start asking people one question. If here's the question, let me back that up. Uh, <laughs> I got so excited about my question. So excited. So what we're doing now is we're going to start asking all of our guests that come on the show uh, like a final question, and it sounds something like this: If you hadn't gone into stunts, uh-huh. or you changed your mind and just said, "I'm done with this," where do you think you would be, or what do you think you'd be doing? right now um so something that i um i've always been passionate about helping people because i was fortunate growing up with uh, a good family and um you know living in a good neighborhood and everything um so i had a lot but didn't necessarily do anything to have that so um being able to kind of pay that forward and use Mm. um whatever means i can to help other people that didn't necessarily have those advantages starting out. Um, that was kind of what I always wanted to do. So, um, cause your major was even sociology, sociology nonprofit, right. correct? Yeah. So I've worked with nonprofits out here. Um, one in particular is children of the night, uh, works with kids that are involved in prostitution, mm-hmm. um, and gets them off the streets, had a shelter for them. Um, let them kind of be kids. Uh, yeah. I've heard of them and saving innocence are like two big ones here in LA. Yeah, okay. Okay. Too. Um, yeah, there's actually quite a few. Um, they're not doing the shelter program anymore, so I haven't been working with them as much. They do more of a GED program, which mm-hmm. is great too. Um, but kind of working in that realm, uh, at some point I might want to, you know, get into the foster program. Um, that's kind of been a big thing on my heart recently. <laughs> so um, we'll see wherever life takes me if that kind of becomes something Plus, that I like get back if into. You, if if I was a foster kid and I got adopted by a stunt woman, and she was teaching <laughs> yeah, me right? like, like this is the gr- that'd be the greatest score ever. Sure, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I would love to to do that if um, if ever I kind of get the opportunity and have the means to, um, then I'll Very probably. Cool. It, it's always something that's kind of in the back of my mind. So, right on. What's yeah. the like career aspirations as far as a stunt performer? Are you? kind of want to transition to more acting or you think you're going to do stunts till you're 70? Um, I mean, you know, it, it takes a toll on your body. Um, I'm not sure her hips will hold up to that. Definitely have a lot of mileage already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, there are different avenues that you can take in terms of like stunt coordinating, fight coordinating, uh, even going into second unit directing and some stunt guys are going into directing as you'll see. Um, it's becoming, you know, uh, more popular right now. Um, so I've been fortunate that they're kind of paving the way. Um, I've always just been one of those people that I'll set myself up for the future. So, um, has the WWE you know, called, <laughs> they have not. Thank <laughs> goodness. Um, but yeah, so I'll kind of, um, you know, always pay attention. I've learned how to like edit and film and be behind camera and, um, always in, you know, an earshot again of like the riggers, the people that set up all, all of the wires and stuff, yeah. um, or a lot of the gags, um, just to kind of know how everything works and how to use their language to, uh, communicate like, all right, this is what we're looking for in this stunt. So if I ever go into coordinating, um, I can kind of work with right. each department or second unit directing, I kind of know what I want to accomplish story-wise or... Um, yeah. Are there, because I don't know the stunt world, are there big female stunt coordinators? There are. Or is it more of a male-dominated? Absolutely, male-dominated. It is. Um, there are definitely a few now. Um, it's, 
it's kind of newer. They're few and far between, mm. but there's some great ones out there. Um, yeah. So we'll see if, if that's kind of the path that I decide to choose yeah. or if life takes me elsewhere. <laughs> no, the most interesting thing about you, I feel like, is that you had, you weren't like a movie kid and you didn't go to a film school and you literally know more about <laughs> being on set and production and how things are going than any USC film school probably could have taught you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, Angela will, t will tell you that like, I'll know more of, um, the, the background behind like right. how the films work versus I can't, I can't, she can't remember a movie, a movie quote for from a movie she movie. just watched, yeah. but oh. she can give you a fight choreography breakdown right. of something she saw six years hey, we ago. We all have skills, yeah. Angelo. Right. So yeah, I just, we're working on your movie quote. We're ability. working on we're it. We're working on it. We're working on it. She's coming along. <laughs> She's trying hard. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that kind of is going to wrap us up to everyone out there who's watching us on YouTube or listening to us on Spotify, uh, Google Play, iTunes. We appreciate you. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button because uh, that makes us happy. Very. Um, anything else you want to say before we sign no, off? I just, I'm Amy. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you for lot. coming I on. I knew nothing yeah, about stunts, so I'm I. That's why. Yeah, we're this is new, but we love stunts, yeah. and uh, I'd like to get your perspective. Plus, I just know you, and you've been so cool for the <laughs> last year and a half. I've known you, and you don't beat me up too bad on the jujitsu mat, so I appreciate Same. that. Thank yeah. you, appreciate Thank that. You. <laughs> all right, well, that's all we have for today, everybody. Um, have a great week, and we will talk to you next time. I'll see you.